Welcome to this edition of Visual Stories in Photo Books. And today we have a special edition of the webinar series. We're actually going to look at some, some photo books, but we're also going to visit the exhibition of these photo books. It's um, the occasion of the Breda Photo Festival, where they have a huge exhibition in the big church in the city in Breda, and that's called China Imagined. And we're gonna, we've taken a few uh, projects that are shown in this exhibition. Uh, we're going to look at them in book format, but also in the exhibition format and see how they relate to each other. How the same story is told in different formats on different platforms. So here we are in the big church in Breda at the exhibition China Imagined, where we're going to look at the projects that we discussed as books, but only in an exhibition format. So we can make the comparison, how the story is told in book format and in exhibition format. So we're looking at the walls, the general space, the general feeling of what these exhibitions try to show and how they do that. So let's take the first project. Watering my horse by a spring at the foot of the long wall. Beautiful title uh, of a beautiful book by Xiao Xiao Xu. Um, she's Chinese, uh, moved to the Netherlands, I think, when she was 14 years old and has lived here ever since. So, let's say dual uh, bicultural Chinese Dutch. And, and this photographer uh, went back to China and, and traveled along the Chinese wall, or as she calls it, the long wall. Um, uh, a series of fortifications uh, throughout China and it became a road trip. 2,500 kilometers of road trip along this wall. And the reflection of that road trip is in this book. And um, it's beautiful. I mean, that's the first thing you notice. Beautiful photographs, uh, beautifully laid out, um, uh, great overviews of, 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 of the environment, beautiful portraits, and indeed, it is a road trip where you, you, you kind of encounter the people that the photographer meets. There's a lot of eye contact, there's really a, a connection between the people, the, 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 the portraits and, and, and the environment that she sees. But in that sense, it's not a full road trip because she stays slightly distant. That's also the, the, the style of her photography, of course. Um, it's, it's, it's very beautiful, but she has a kind of uh, a distant, more uh, documenting way of photographing and not a, an extremely personal style. So there is less intimacy in that sense. But that's also because of the type of story she wants to tell. I mean, there's, there's several texts in this book that each recount a folktale. And I think what you, the, the aim of, of what she tries to do in this book is to, to, to challenge or to look at the, the, the tension between tradition and modernity. She looks at uh, how old traditions still live on or try to live on along the lives, uh, in the lives that, 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 are playing, that are happening along the long wall in China. And that aspect is actually very beautifully portrayed in the book. You see people uh, in, um, going about their daily lives, there you see people you know, uh, ma making the land, doing their work, taking naps, kind of walking, walking their sheep. But you also see uh, several instances where they keep working on their traditions, where there are uh, this, this, this small series here of people playing music in these small tents, um, how festivals are being prepared or how they are uh, being executed. And in that sense, it's a beautiful representation of how people in China are, are, are you know, maybe we, we have this image of these big cities and it's always uh, very modern and very fast moving, but here there's a calmness. There's a calmness in the way she photographed it and the calmness in, 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 in people's lives. And indeed, it's along the long wall. In that sense, it becomes a road trip, but the, the, the traveling aspect is not very powerful, powerfully represented in the book. 
that's not a bad thing. It doesn't make this a bad book because I think it's very, very beautiful indeed. Um, but it just shows a different aspect. So I think the, the, the general format is indeed a road trip, but here the, the focus on, on tradition and, and, and the tension between tradition and modernity and how uh, folk tales and, and, and rituals from the past are being continued in, in today's life. And that really is the focus of the book project. And we'll see in the exhibition that it's slightly different, that in fact the road trip becomes the leading guideline in the exhibition. So there is a, a difference between the, the story that's told in the book and the story that and or how the story is told mostly within the exhibition. This really is a road trip. And instead of the whole flow of the of, that, that is shown in the book, we here we see only an outtake. But in order to really create that feeling of, of, of the road trip, I think that's why they painted this whole wall structure, the Chinese wall structure, on the exhibition wall. And we see outtakes of the project coming back within, within the exhibition. And looking at the whole wall, I think the, the main objects, the, the main images that really attract your attention are the portraits. They're very uh, they're large format, they're very colorful, and those are the, the, the photographs that attract your attention. It's the eyes of the people that, that are portrayed that really draw you in. And here you also see the presence of the photographer. This is how it becomes a, a road trip in the sense that there is a connection between the people that she meets and the audience. Whereas the other photographs are a bit more distant, They're a bit more of a recording of what she sees. In the portraits there really is that connection. Also the other element that we also saw in the book and how she wants to show that there is these traditions that, that, that are being lost or that are, that are getting, that are treated in a different way comes back in this typology of objects that we see. So we see one, two, three, four, five of those objects weaved within the whole exhibition. Um, it's a, it's a beautiful installation. As I said before, I love her photographs. The, the, the visual quality, the aesthetics is very powerful. It's very consistent. As of where you are, you've got the sense of the, of, of, of the road trip, of, of, the, of the travel that she's been taking together with the very powerful and very beautiful photographs that Sha Sha Shu uh, took on this trip. So it really becomes a combination of, of, of journey, of photography and content. And that's really, I think it's, it's, it's beautifully portrayed. I love the photographs. I think the sense of road trip is very much there. All in all, uh, a, a beautiful exhibition, uh, no doubt. The next project we're looking at is by a Chinese photographer, uh, Tsang Ke Chung. And he is uh, uh, looking at work or at, at, at the Chinese landscape. And he really looks at how um, uh, um, the, the, the Chinese landscape has been evolving, has been changing along the Yellow River in China. Um, it's interesting to see that, that uh, according to his own words, he has, been, has found inspiration from Alex Sos, his project, Sleeping uh, by the Mississippi. A traditional format of a road trip, a very personal recounting of, of, of people and encounters along the Mississippi River. And indeed, the Mississippi the River aspect comes back in this book as well. But the form and the format of the narration is completely different. Here is a photographer who is not as personal as Alex Soth or, or, or others. Here's a photographer who takes a distant view and is really more documenting uh, in a very monumental and a very heavy and, 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 and very structural way, whatever he encounters. And here in the book, you, you really see the changing of the landscape, how, the, 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 how people have actually been influencing um, the landscape and how they've been adapting the landscape to their own views. It's no longer a natural environment, it really becomes a man-made environment. And later on, we will see in the exhibition how this has affected how the, 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 the relationship of men, of humans, to that environment. What we see in the book is actually part one of this project. Here he follows the river and shows the, 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 the changing of the environment. 
in part two in the exhibition, you see how man relates to this environment. We see the relationship of the small human figure to the large man-made and natural structures around him. So let's have a look at that exhibition. And, and as, I, as we saw in the book, this really is a portfolio. It's like a big puzzle where all images become pieces of that same puzzle. And together they show the entire picture. And, and you kind of see that in the exhibition too. Every photograph represents something else on this idea of how to compare the, the, the tiny human to the, to the large structures, be it natural, be it man-made, that are found along the river. And there is very little repetition. So in a way, this also becomes, um, how to say, um, they're the same pieces and they create a similar puzzle as in the book. Maybe this puzzle becomes smaller because, it, I mean, the comparison goes off a little bit, of course, but the outtake as exhibition works in a very similar way as in the book. You, with, all, with each image, the full picture becomes clearer, becomes bigger, becomes more nuanced, becomes uh, uh, better to, to, to see what, the point, what point the photographer is making. And again, I'm so surprised that this photographer uh, takes Alex Soth as his inspiration, the Sleeping by the Mississippi book, which really is a traditional road trip. You really sense the presence of the photographer in almost every picture in that book. But here, the photographer almost becomes invisible. It really is a very monumental registration of people within an overwhelming uh, natural or man-made environment. That's the core of this story for me. And to compare book and exhibition, I think that actually the exhibition might even work better than the book. With fewer images, because the images are so monumental, are so big and are so beautifully, heavily uh, shown, printed, exhibited. It's very, very powerful. It's really interesting to see how two chapters of the same story, the book, in chapter one, the exhibition, chapter two, tell the same type of story, but very much in the same photographic narration. They both are portfolios. They both take the same approach in a monumental, heavy style to tell a similar story, but with slightly different approaches, um, uh, stressing different aspects of the same bigger project. The last book we'll be looking at is this one. It's a beautiful, very yellow uh, book, Experimental Relationship, Volume 1, by Pixie Liao. Uh, she's, a, she's a big star photographer, uh, became very well known through this project. And it's a collection of uh, 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 self-portraits of herself and her boyfriend, Momo. Um, she's Chinese, oh, Moro, sorry, his, her boyfriend Moro. Uh, she's Chinese, he is Japanese, and she's been documenting their, uh, their affair, basically. And it's, it's quirky, it's different, it's not what you would expect to see uh, uh, as a self-representation of, of, uh, of, of, of a relationship. And let me read you the first few lines from her book, her, her introduction. Um, as a woman brought up in China, I used to think I could only love someone who is older and more mature than me, who can be my protector and mentor. Then I met my current boyfriend, Moro. Since he is five years younger than me, I felt that the whole concept of relationships changed all the way around. I became the, I became the person who has more authority and power. So she's actually found herself in a, in, 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 in a position that her culture or her environment never actually uh, um, uh, prepared her for. And so she's been using this different kinds of relationship where maybe she is in control and she has more power than, 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 than the male counterpart and has been documenting that in photographs. And you get this really quirky, funny collection of self-portraits, selfies. And this, this really is a, a, a catalog. It's all the photographs that she's been taking in these, these first years of their relationship uh, between 2007 and 2017, 10 years of photographs. 
and I, it's every image, and that's really powerful, adds something else. It really is the, even though the, the style or the approach, can you, it's, is it the same style? Well, yes, because the light conditions are very similar and the, the, and they're always selfies. You always see that they're actually taking the photographs themselves. You see this, this the, 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 the wire to the camera is always part of, part of the frame. So yes, it's in that sense, it's stylistically quite similar. At the same time, there are many, many different kinds of situations and many different kinds of photographs. There's some close-ups, there's some more, more, let's say an image like this is very graphic. Um, there's eye contact, sometimes there's no eye contact, sometimes it's highly sexual, sometimes it's not so, it's, it's not sexual at all. Sometimes there's references to, uh, let's say, uh, uh, famous uh, uh, paintings like this one where she's holding her boyfriend's nipple. I mean, that's clearly a reference to, 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 to uh, a well-known painting. So it really goes in many different directions. And at the same time, there's very little repetition. There's very little repetition in uh, the, the kinds of situations that are portrayed. All the different pieces that paint the picture, that, that show the whole, the whole puzzle, the whole relationship. I think more than, than, a, than a portfolio, I would call this a catalog. Really a collection of their best, funniest, quirkiest uh, uh, photographs throughout the 10 year relationship, throughout the 10 years that they've been making this, making this project together. Um, very funny, uh, I love the aesthetics, I love the approach, I love the whole idea, and it really changes perception and, and helps maybe other people also to, to, to kind of break out of the bounds on what a relationship should be that with the strong man and the, the weaker woman. No, here is a, a relationship where the roles are reversed and I really, really like that. So the book is very much a catalog, I would say, of all their best photographs. And now let's see what the exhibition, how the exhibition translates this concept into a, 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 a different format and form. And as in the book, it's really a collection of their best shots. It, it really is a catalog kind of approach. And we see that in the same way in the exhibition. There are very, there's a lot fewer images. It represents the entire project. This is what it's all about. This represents, this is the icon of all those photographs. And the other photographs that are shown in the exhibition, there's only six other photographs, are the support text. They, they kind of contextualize this one image. But for me, it's very clear that, that this exhibition, this presentation of the project really is about this one photograph. This is the one that has to come out, that has to grab your attention, has to stay in your mind's eye. And the other photographs kind of support that. They, 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 they lift that image up. It's, it's interesting to, to see that there's this one image with a very strong eye contact towards the camera, therefore towards the viewer. The three images next to it, which are in much smaller format, do not have that, that, that aspect. There's not a person, a representation of something, but there is no eye contact. They're more graphic. There's red coming back everywhere, but they are more graphic. They are more contemplative in that sense. The images on the side panels are portraits. I mean, we see the, the, the two main characters of, of the project, but the ones on the right, there is no eye contact. Again, they are more contemplative. They are a bit more distant. And only this photograph on the left panel is actually an image where there is again eye contact. So within these seven photographs, there's only two that invite the, the, the viewer directly into the frame by having this eye contact between uh, a sitter, or the photographer in this case, and the audience. So even in that way, this main photograph, this icon image is becomes the main picture and invites most attention, invites most yeah, the, the, the most attention from the audience and represents in that way, in an iconic way, the entire project. Here is a project that is not represented as a book, at least to my knowledge. It's by Thomas Sauvin, it's called World Park. Um, 
a French curator and editor who found an enormous amount of, of thrown away photographs in a, in a recycling plant somewhere near Beijing. And he's been going through all this collections of, of, of uh, found footage of, of, of regular photography taken by, by normal people, uh, uh, day, citizens of China, of their daily lives. And he's been making different selections and edits to tell a different kind of story on China. And I love this project he, because he found photographs that are from a particular theme park in Beijing that's called World Park where you could actually travel throughout the world and see main very important buildings like the Eiffel Tower or the Tower of Pisa or the Pyramids of Gizeh all recreated in a, on a smaller scale in, in Beijing. And what you see is different installments of typologies. It's really very interesting to see how he been, has been able to identify photographs that are visually identical. But it's only the person featuring in the photograph that becomes different. And in that way, you start to really look at these photographs, not as individual images, but really as a collection. And they, through that way, through the format of the typology, he's able to tell a different kind of story. It becomes even more layered than that because all, a lot of these photographs are, are we were reminded of indeed how these, these, these monuments, these buildings are often represented in the media. We recognize these photographs, we recognize these buildings, we even recognize the position or the, the point of view in which they are photographed. But then there's, it's slightly off. The background is different, the scale is different, because this is obviously not the real Eiffel Tower in Paris, but it's actually a, a re rebuilding of it in China, in a different scale, in a different context, with different surroundings. But to use the typology to, to identify within this enormous amount of photographs, only, what is it, 8, 10, 12 photographs of the Eiffel Tower, but in which you can actually start to see how you know, the, the, the visual structure is always the same, but it's only the person featuring within the, within the photograph that is different. Well, that tells you something on how people will approach these, these monuments, how people take photographs, how people look for something that they recognize. That's one aspect. The other aspect is that you really start noticing how people behave in these kind of photographs. I think it's a beautiful and a very interesting way to treat photography and it's, 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 it's a big compliment to, to the curator, Thomas Sauvin, in this case, in how he's been able to select and identify these, these structures, these typologies within the enormous amount of photographs that he's been able to recuperate from this uh, plant in China. An amazing project for me, it's very interesting to look and to see how a different uh, visual format is, is, is used to tell and express a certain type of story from China. And that concludes this edition of my webinar series, Visual Stories in Photo Books. And we didn't look just at photo books, we also looked at, the, at some exhibitions and how you can change, how you can tell the same story in a completely different format. What options the book offers, what limitations some books have, and what options exhibitions offer compared to that. I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to, to get in touch with us if you'd like to know more about all the activities that we are uh, exploring. If you're interested in, in, in how you can create stories, you might be interested to download this booklet, uh, Tell Your Story, A New Role for Photography in a Changing Market, which is a um, research into business models for documentary photographers. We also created a small uh, a manual on how to create a photographic project, and uh, there is a workshop available that you can also find on the 4HANA website, Tell Your Story. Thanks for watching, we hope to see you again, bye bye.